Hi, in this video I'm looking at this example here where we're asked to use forward and backward scanning to analyze this following network and display the results in a chart. And a chart just means a table. So we're first going to do the forward scanning which works out what's the earliest start time of each activity. So what's the earliest I can start each of these activities A, B, C and D. Then we'll do the backward scanning which works out the latest start time for each of these activities. So let's start with the forward scanning. The forward scanning starts from the left hand side of the network and works our way through all the way through to the end node. So the left hand node represents the start node, right hand node represents the end node, and we work our way through the network. We always start at time zero. So our forward scanning values go on the left hand side of the nodes as well, and we start at time zero. I am starting this project right now. Okay? Then I start looking along all my paths that I have available. So if I go along the A path, if I'm going to do my forward scanning, the latest that I can start C, because that's when A finishes, is after A finishes. So if A starts at zero, takes three minutes to complete, it's going to finish three minutes in. And if it's finished three minutes in, that's when C can start, because it can't, C can't start till A finishes. When we're doing B, B is going to be finished after five minutes after it starts. It starts at time zero, zero plus five is five. We can then now work out each of these paths here, but we now have two paths coming into a single node. When we have two paths coming into a single node, we just write our answers on the path because we don't know which number is going to go into this node here. We have to choose between one of them. So let's work out the C path first. C starts at three minutes, takes C minute, six minutes to complete. So it's going to be finished after the ninth minute. The D path, D starts after five minutes, takes two minutes to complete. So it's going to be finished after the seventh minute. And then we pick whichever one of these is biggest, okay? Because we can't finish this joining of paths until both activities are completed, which means the fact that we need to wait for whichever one takes the longest to finish. So we need to wait for the C path to finish. The D path will just be sitting there waiting for a while. And that's it. That's forward scanning done. Now these are the earliest starting times for each of these activities. So the earliest I can start A and B at is zero. The earliest I can start C at is at the third minute. Earliest I can start D at is at the fifth minute and the entire project can be completed after the ninth minute. Now we can do our backward scanning. So our backward scanning is working from our end node backwards and we start off when our project finishes. So we take whatever number we finished at here and put it in here. Then we want to get work out backwards our latest starting time of each activity. When is the latest I can start each of these activities by? So if I look at, say, D, I take my 9 here, and I'm going to subtract off how long D takes. Because if I can wait until the ninth minute to finish D, then I can start D two minutes earlier, and I'll be fine. So I do 9, take 2, and that will give me 7. So I can start D after the seventh minute, and I'll be fine to finish on the ninth minute then. The earliest I can start D is at 5, but I can wait to the 7th minute to start D. Having a look at 6, I do this, uh, C, I do the same thing. 9 takes 6 will give me 3. And again, we now have two paths meeting at a single node, so we're just going to write our results on the path and then work out our value for the node here. So we just keep doing the same thing. We take the 3 here, Subtract off this 3, and that's going to give me 0. I've got my 7 here, take off that 5, and I'm going to have 2. And this time we take the smallest value and put it into here. Because that's going to represent the latest start time overall for this separation of paths. The latest I can start this leaving this node is at the 0th minute. I cannot delay A at all, because I know that that's now my critical path. I'll explain that in a moment. 
but I can still wait a little bit for the B because I knew I could wait a couple of minutes for B, so I can actually wait it a little bit. So now from this, we get our critical path. The critical path is the one where there's no delays, the path through where all the numbers match up. Okay, where we start off 003399, because I've got no delays available here. Okay, so my critical path, which is not in the question, but it can be asked, is going to go through A and C. I cannot delay here. I've got some time to delay here. I've got two minutes spare along this path, but I've got no minutes spare here. So I can delay B and D a little bit. And that turns up in our chart. So let's do the chart now. Our chart takes on a few values. So if we start making this up, we first have our activity. Each activity goes into our chart, into our table. The time for the activity to take, so the activity duration or time duration. We have the earliest start time for each activity, earliest start time for each activity. And we have the latest finish time, which is not the same as the latest start time. But I'll explain that when we go to fill that in. Latest finish time for each activity. And lastly, we have the float time, which is how much we can delay each task by. Okay, so we put each of our activities in there. So we have activity A, activity B, activity C, and activity D. My activity duration is just the times for each activity. So A takes three minutes to complete, B takes five minutes to complete, C takes six minutes to complete, and D takes two minutes to complete. We can now record in our earlier start times, which are the times that we recorded doing our forward scanning, the ones that I have in green. So my earlier start time for each activity is the number it's in the node to its left at the start of each arc. So the earliest I can start A at is at zero. And in fact, we know that it has to start at zero because it's on our critical path. The earliest I can start B at is zero. The earliest I start C at is at the third minute. The earliest I start D at, I can start it at the fifth minute. Now my latest finish times come from our backward scanning and it comes from the node to the right of the arc, to the end of the arc. So my latest finish time for A, the latest that I can finish A at is going to be this red three here. The latest I can finish B at is that seven there because I can delay B. We know that because we had two minutes spare here when we're going backwards. I can delay B up to the seventh minute. I have to start, I can start it at the zeroth minute, but I can finish at the seventh minute. It might only take five minutes long, but I can wait a little bit. Doing C, C must finish on the ninth minute and D must also finish in the ninth minute because it must be finished by the end of the project. Now I can work out my float times. Now the float times are pretty simple. It's just a subtraction of these three values. And you just work from right through the table to the left because your float time is how much time you've got left over. And if you take the latest you can finish by, subtract off the earliest you must start by and how long it takes, then you're going to have how much time you can hang around waiting for left over. Okay, so my float time here is going to be 3 take 0 take 3 and that is going to give me 0. And I should know that because A is on my critical path, I can't delay it whatsoever. Okay, so now we can do B. So B is going to be 7 take 0, take 5, which is going to give me 7, take 0, take 5, gives me 2. So I can delay B by 2 minutes, which I've been discussing a couple of times. Doing C, we're going to have 9, 
take three, take six, and nine take three take six is going to be zero. And that makes sense because it's on our critical path. And then lastly, we can do D, which is going to be nine, take five, take two, which is going to give me two minutes again, because I can also delay D by two minutes. Now that doesn't mean I can delay both B and D by two minutes, because if I delayed them both by two minutes, I would be then running late. That means across this path, I have two minutes spare. So I can hang around and wait a little bit. That's critical path analysis using forward and backward scanning. Forward scanning gives you the earliest start times. Backward scanning gives you the latest start times, which also gives you the latest finish times for each activity as well. Calculating those out, you can get your float times, which is also important. The path that has no float time is your critical path. And that's it.